Hi, Donna. I don't know if anybody else has this problem, but does anybody else, when September comes, just start singing, See you in September. Sorry, you had to listen to my singing. <laughs> oh, sorry for being a little late today. The pool people came early, which is good because the pool's closed and not full of leaves. However, it kind of... um. I had a feeling they would come then, but I didn't want to change it because I thought if I changed it, then they wouldn't come. So I'm really sad because, like, summer's over, school's back in, the rainbow stamper's at school. I kind of, like, know I have all this free time, but I really don't know what to do with myself. Is that not crazy or what? And look, I can show you the catalog finally. Yay! Okay. <laughs> you can see the inside of the catalog. Isn't that funny? <laughs> now you will. Good. I'm glad I'm not the only person. So good morning, everyone. Welcome to September. Having a heat wave. We're going to have a heat wave today too, Donna, but tomorrow it's supposed to be 70. So I think it's going to be like 88 today and tomorrow will be a high of 70. So welcome to Maryland. This is false fall, as we call it. I'm sure it'll be hot, um, you know, now that the pool's closed. But next week will be super hot. Wake me up when September comes. That's a good one, Julie. I like that too. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to just be real honest with you. I have no plan for today because I'm a little overwhelmed because the Rainbow Stamper's back in school and everything is very discombobulated. I know that sounds a little crazy, but I feel a little bit lost all this free time and I'm, I like don't know what to do with myself. So, But anyway, look, you can see the catalog. Has everyone gotten their catalog? If you're a customer, customer of mine, everyone should have. So if you did not get your catalog, please reach out to me. Let me know. And I'll make sure I get you one. Um, I do still have one spot open in my ribbon share, which you'll get some of this ribbon here. So I have one spot open if anybody wants to, to take that spot. Um, you would have to email me at reachthestamper.gmail.com. Everyone else is already all paid up, so I have one ribbon share open left. So does anyone have any cards they want to make today? Because I have no plan whatsoever. But I do need to make, uh, my friend ask me to make an anniversary card, so we could do that as well if you guys don't want to do holiday. But I'll also show you, I just got my swap cards back as part of a card swap. 110 today, wow, we are not that hot. My goodness, that's something. Shoo! So I'll share my swap cards with you. We did, I did get a lot of Halloween, which you know I love Halloween, so that kind of worked out really well. So this one is from Barbara Pendleton. She created this card for our swap. And since I can show you the catalog now, we can flip to the back. You would think I have this like all numbered and set up by now, but that features this really cool guy from the Spooktacular Bash. And then we have this awesome card with the like a little ombre colors of Wicked. And this was created by Katherine Anderson. She used the uh, Wicked die. And then the spider. So you get a spider and the wicked in that. So that's a really fun one. And then she has the woodlands background and then some of the DSP. So that's a really cool card. Another uh, fall card. This was created by Shannon Lorenz Hatch. This features that really cool embossing folder. I believe it's called Hammered. And then she used, um, I'm thinking this is the copper shimmer paint with one of our new folders. Or our new masks, I should say. This is a lot of detail. This is a really gorgeous card. And then that copper ribbon. I love that ribbon. That looks really cool. Really great job on that. You would like to see a cardinal card. Well, I'll have to order that set, Janet, because I don't own that one yet. Hold on. I'm trying to stay with the fall here, so I'll bring you the winter in a second. Here's another cool one. You guys probably saw Tammy share this one, but this card was created by Alice Houston. I believe it's Houston, not Houston, like they say in New York when you're in Soho. But this card, whoopee, is the Wheel of Misfortune and they can spin the wheel. How does the wheel spin, let's see. Spin the wheel on what they're gonna get and there's the contestants. <laughs> That's a really cool card and it's got, even has a little slider with the, uh, it's a very interactive card. This would be one that whoever you sent it to, great job, Alice. This would be one of those people that you only send it to the people you know 
don't get rid of their cards, which would be me. So this is super cool. But a lot of work went into that card. Very much appreciated, Alice. Okay, and then I have another cute Halloween card. This uses the uh, Harvest Bundle, I believe. And then also, this is another little dude in here. This one's kind of like a multiple uh, holiday one. Birds of a Feather. It has four different little birds. You get a, a turkey who's cooking a pie. And then a cute little bird chicken and a duck and the chicken is cute too i love the chicken so that's there's that one and then we will go into i have a few holiday cards this is a really cute this has some of the uh shimmery crystal effects on the snowman here that's really cute have a great one with season's greeting with the die cut and i should have said this one was made by who made this card first of all this little duck here was bernadette bernadette bio made that one and this one was by Marsha Dash. Marsha created this card. Have to give credit where credit's due. Season's Greetings. This is a really, looks like a simple card to make. Got a lot of impact because it uses that first frost DSP, some die cuts overlaid over the silver bells, which is really pretty as well. This was created by K. Han Kassler. It's a great card. I like that paper a lot. It's very photorealistic. And then I have a, my neighbor will love this. My neighbor is a former figure skater. Isn't that something? Like a real figure skater. So this is by Nancy Long. I have a nice ice skating car that's cut out with the real red glimmer paper. And then you have that hammered background paper. Really cool. This one, I love this one too. Deck the Halls. It's very simple. Red and green. I love it. Very, very beautiful. This is by Karen Monger. It's got a little bit of layering there. Really, really pretty. And I like this one because I love the black. It's very hard to pull off either an all white or all black background. And I think this one looks really, really cool. It's also got some of the, I completely forgot the name of this. This is the Peacock Specialty Paper. This was created by Luli Gonzalez. If you've never gone to Luli's page, you have to check her page out. She is almost always in our blog hops and she has the most creative cards. She's got a little piece of vellum there, a little bit of a... Uh, ribbon that she um I think she added some color to this because I feel like you no know, this might be this is a ribbon color I'm mistaken but really beautiful card and then she's got the peacock so it was like a great way to bring in something old and something new so she has the peacock paper the peacock folder and then she brought in the uh, Christmas ornaments so I think that's gorgeous so some really nice cards there so thank you all for humoring me as I shared them and thank you to all the people who participated in the card swap so I have to put those back move them on the side so hopefully they won't fall so how do you get a catalog Lindy if you just send me your email or your mailing address to my email address so send me your full address make sure you include your zip code the rates the stamper at gmail.com I'll be happy to send you one out I'll send you the holiday and the big catalog complimentary and then everything is on there, not Cajun Copper. <laughs> hey, Cindy Clark, how you doing? Um, and you can always go back because this does get replayed at the end. So, all right, I'm taking suggestions. I'm looking back here. I need, I love the Wicked Die. I did buy that one. The dimensions of the frame. Yeah, I think you asked me that before with the Dracula card. So they're all, um, they're fairly small. Hold on, I'll grab them. They're not huge, I should say. So I think that one, let me pull that one out. Because I know you asked me that before, so I will give you a, a measurement. So that has a two part. So this little outline part is the black, and then it has a little part that cuts out him, the Dracula. So bear with me one sec. If you have any questions about anything in the catalog or something specific you want to see, please feel free to let me know. I have six more hours. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So this measures about full size two and a quarter. And I think it's two and a quarter square. Pretty close. So two and a quarter square. That's this black outline portion here. And then you can cut this out if you wanted to re-overlay it. And that one is about one and a half by one and three quarters. So... Hopefully that helps you there, Donna. But these are great too. You could use these. I think these would be really fun to use for like Christmas because they're very ornate. 
I believe that's what they're called, as a matter of fact, ornate ornate frames. They're really like super decorative and you could make a great Christmas card out of this with like cutting some red or green or even black and have it in the background. So that is really cool. So we can make an anniversary card. We can make a Christmas card. We can make fall. If you guys are all fall and Christmas out, we could totally do the, um, we can do of the long one. Oh, sorry, Don. You did ask for that one already. No worries. You know, I don't mind. Um, Kelly O'Brien. Kelly, are you new? Thanks for joining. Okay. So I have an anniversary card to make. Would we like to make an anniversary card or would we like to make something else? I am completely open. I do really like the Cardinal. I think this is a gorgeous set. I do have all the DSP coming, so I'm really am looking forward to that. And the people that did participate in the DSP or the ribbon share, you will get a little something extra in there as well. So I do, I do really like the Cardinal. But I want to get this, honestly, because I think this will be awesome for 4th of July. Memorial Day. I love the colors of this card. I think are really cool. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to get the stars necessarily, but I'm definitely going to get the stitched dies. There's a lot of different things. You can layer them so you can have really thin layers of dies like this example here. So you can have a really thin piece of a star. So that I think is really cool. Anniversary. All right. Kelly. Oh, Blizzard's friend. I gotcha. Okay, cool. Um, anniversary card. That's what we're going to do then. This um, stamp set. Is really nice too with the trees because you can make 3d trees if you wanted to so I think that's really cool they have the gold pizza boxes which are food safe so you could put treats in them make it really really easy I love this stamp set here however for me this is still really close to the pine stamp set we have so I haven't gotten that one yet so but I think the other cool part is and I think I told people about this last week this has snow on it which is really cute and just in case you missed this we do have this puff paint in the catalog now but you have to heat set it to get it to puff it is super duper runny and as a matter of fact thank you donna i was finally able to um rehook up my um my embossing gun to the boss because donna was nice enough to send me some really long zip ties so i'm gonna turn this on and just for the heck of it because i want to show you the puff paint so you understand so i want to show you exactly how it works that way you know ahead of time and you won't buy it if you think it's it is a little bit of work is what I'm trying to say nicely I did get all of the um, metallic inks so those are really fun I know that Gail who was on here with us watching she did a project with just the re-inker so I still have to get those and I got this whole super sweet I got this whole thing so this curvy keepsake die if you missed that last week I did a little recap on the size differences this also coordinates with the uh, cuckoo clock die that's in the regular catalog. So in case you want to get that, this is easy to cut out. Let's see what the other one was. Something else that I was kind of... This, I hadn't gotten this, but I think this paper, the brightly gleaming, because it has copper, is really pretty. You know, all know I got the acetate, so I love that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you this puff paint real quick. And then... We're going to make an anniversary card. And what I'm going to do is, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do, honestly. But I'm going to show you the technique I was telling you about when I made a mistake. And I said I would save it for a later date. So I'm going to do that. So when you have your puff paint, you're, what you're supposed to do first is you want to shake it really well to mix it up. Oh, hi, Tammy. Hi, Tina. Nice to see you guys. Thank you all for joining. Okay, so what you do is you take your paint, and it, it's going to come out really runny, so I want you to see how it comes out. It's very, see it's very wet. So the good part is you can kind of make your own lines with it if you wanted to. You could add to it, but I will tell you one thing. You don't want to squeeze it. This is very heavy, and I learned the hard way that it takes a long time to dry, like a really long time. So I have my heat tool, so what you do is... You want to start off on low, because if you don't start off on low, it kind of runs. So I start off on low, and my heat gun is like screaming hot right now. Start off on low to kind of set where you have it, if that makes sense. Like set the place that it is, because if you blow it, it'll actually blow off. So I'm kind of just setting where it is, and I'm going to turn it back on to high. And make sure I'm in camera. And as you heat it, okay, you can see this one right now. Hopefully you can see it. It starts to puff. 
So let me turn this off and move it to the side. So if you can see right here, this is still very liquidy and this one is starting to puff. So it kind of looks bumpy. So because this is so goopy, it does take a long time to puff. So that's why I would advise not putting it on heavy. It's probably easier to put on many layers of it. And then as you heat it, you can heat it from the bottom too, just to get both sides. As you heat it, it puffs up. But I want to show you one other thing. So just, this is a little labor intensive because you do have to heat it because if not, it will not dry. It'll probably take a really long time. But I want to show you, let me just use my older one. So right now, if you were to squish this, it may or may not work. I might have done a good job. Nope, right here. It's still wet. So what I did was I had put this project together and then I glued it down and I pressed it. And there you go, you can see. The stuff still comes squirting out if you put it on thick. Now, if you don't put it on thick, like this one here, it is puffy, but it doesn't squirt because this is pretty dry. But this one here, it just came out with another liquid wetness. So make sure you don't put it on too thick. And then you just have to go back and re-dry it again or puff the new part up. But, ooh, that's really hot. But I'm gonna show you one other thing that you can do. So if you wanted to do this in more than one layer, so say you wanted more, what you can do is then if you were like building up a snow scene, we'll put like a little bit in here. You can put a little bit more on top if you wanted to. Okay, and then you can continue building it either up or or uh, like higher height wise or higher like a thicker paint because there's a couple of things in the catalog when you look at it you're gonna be like how in the world did they do that so I'm guessing somebody did multiple layers of this so if you look at this sideways, like 3D, you can see how far this sticks off. So we just keep adding layers and layers. So you can definitely make it stick off far. You're just going to have to take your time. So here's the point of my story. This is a lot of work for puff paint. So if this seems like a lot to you, just keep that in mind when you get this. And you could just maybe get regular puff paint at the craft store. But I would never want you to think you just, I thought you just put it down and it puffed. I didn't realize because I didn't read that you have to heat it. So just, just so you know. Because otherwise, you know, you'll get this thing of running and be like, wait a minute, how did they make that? That's what I thought anyway. And then I read that it said you did have to heat set it. So that is one thing I just wanted to tell you guys real quick. Um, puff paint and Wink of Stella, you could absolutely do. I will tell you, though, I have had thus far the ice stamping glitter. I've had a hard time getting it to stick to that. It doesn't stick like I thought it would. So I'm still working on ways to use this that's not super messy. Because if you look in the catalog, and I think this would probably be a good idea to do with maybe clear embossing powder because it would stick. But if you see, they have made this into like, if you guys remember, my grandparents had some of these ornaments, so that's why I know. They had these ornaments, I'm guessing it was like 50s, 60s, maybe early 70s, that were um, stockings. And they have like this, it's probably asbestos, but they have this like sticky stuff that kind of looks like pieces of ice well that kind of looks like what they did here but what they did I believe is they put the um maybe like a clear embossing powder and then sprinkled this and then let it dry that way it would stick to it but you're still gonna have to shake it off because it definitely it, it's thick but it's not super thick and I know that's a very vague description but if you see when it falls it's very crystal like but it's not as fine as other glitter, if that makes sense. I know that was super great explanation, but it's definitely not as chunky as it looks on here. You probably have to build up the chunk to get it to look this way. So just FYI, I would just hate for someone to order it and then be disappointed because you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't seem right at all. Now on a whole other side note, I will tell you that I love the um, shimmery crystal effects. The same thing with this one though. You do have to shake it a little bit just to keep it, to mix it up I should say. Not really to 
keep it anyway. It is very shimmery on the inside and this is really easy to use because the tip does not get gooped up like the one did in the past. So I haven't had any problems with this thus far. You do have to allow drying time with this though. It takes a long time to dry. You could probably heat it up but I don't know if it would bubble it or not. That might be something fun we could do also. So just FYI, a couple little things and let's see, that would be, I'm going to have to remember that. You, you, Oh, so you've put the glitter on while it's wet and then heat it. Now, what are you talking about? With the liquid? That's what I would imagine to do. Tina. So Tina has some amazingly creative videos, if you guys haven't watched her. She is very, she is uber talented. That girl has, as my grandfather would say, she's got ideas she hasn't even thought of yet. That's what he used to say all the time, which cracked me up. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on a anniversary card. I'm going to try to make it simple-ish, but maybe we can kind of fool around with a couple of these things and see if we can make it a little bit more exciting. We can even try some just for the heck of it to see to see how they work or whatever, so, because I would like to do that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab, my, I think, the springtime foils because I like doing that as an overlay. I'm not 100% sure if that's what we're going to end up with or not, but let's start with that. We can add something else into it anniversary wise anniversary is very big so you kind of have to like really figure out what it is you want to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my big catalog here let's see and this one would be really nice actually we could do something really nice with a magnolia that would be pretty magnolia what if we did this with the stripes and maybe like a layer of something on it. All right, I kind of think like I feel like maybe I have an idea. And she may or may not even like this card, but if she doesn't, I'll just give her a more plain one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a piece of crumb cake as the base. And I'm going to grab some of the Magnolia DSP. Let's see. All right. This is the one I think think what did I think I was going to go for because I was trying to go with kind of like subtle ish we'll do the pink no you know what we're going to do the flower we're going to do the magnolia and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you when I made this mistake the other day and we got to kind of figure out the only thing is we have to figure out the best way to actually make the mistake positively because whoops because if not, oh, I just cut that a little too small. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. Because if not, it could be hugely messy and we have to figure out how to make it work to our advantage. So I'm going to cut this down to three and three quarters by five. So put that on there. Maybe put another layer of something behind it. Not 100% sure with that yet. Let's see. So that and that. I'm going to put a little piece of soft suede as a border. So let's see, we'll just cut this one out. So I'm going to do this one at, what are we here? Five, four by five and a quarter. So four by five and a quarter. And remember when you're doing this, oh, that looks nice. We could always cut something from behind here if we wanted to, to lay on top. So we'll see how that goes. I don't know what we're going to do with that part yet. And then I'm going to show you what I was talking about. So the only thing I really need is a sentiment. So let me just check my sentiments real quick. See. You know, I know Beautiful Bouquet has some great ones. Happy anniversary. We'll do that. That's simple. Beautiful bouquet. This also has some amazing um, dies that go with it. Uh, they used to be bundled, but now they're separate. But this is a great stamp set if you don't have it. It has a lot of really nice sayings. And they're definitely, there's a lot on here. They're a lot larger than they look. So these are pretty tiny. And you can see the happy anniversary is much bigger than that. So we'll use that. And I'm going to grab one more thing. I'm going to grab my Magnolia dies. Magnolia stamp set. Did I not get the dies out? There we go. Okay, so Magnolia dies, and just in case we have Good Morning Magnolia, you could always add something to that. The other one that goes with this, which is Garden Lane, has some really nice stuff as well. 
All right, so I'm gonna keep these handy. And let's see, I feel like we should cut something out of this, even if we just do it for later. I wonder how big this would be. You know what we could do? I'm just gonna cut out some leaves. I know they're gonna be in soft suede and that might be a odd color. I'm gonna cut out the centers as well, just to be able to use it. I'm just gonna cut a few of these out of the middle. That way we have something at least in the middle since so we won't waste that full piece. I'm gonna cut these out and then we will possibly layer these over or we might save them for something different. Since we're covering that piece up anyway, we might as well. So I'm just gonna lay this whole piece on my magnetic platform. I do wanna kinda keep them to the center um, just because I, I wanna make sure I have a nice border around the edge. So I'm gonna put these in, cut these out. Oh, so Mary, maybe this is like not a new thing then. I always assumed that puff paint was already puffy. Like anything I've ever gotten from the store was already puffy. So that probably was my um, thinking that it was already gonna puff. So I'm guessing it's just a different style. So there's our piece. We have these little pieces cut out. Obviously you could certainly cut many more of these out, but we'll set these on the side for now. And I did run this through back and forth. That way the center pieces would come out easily, which if you can see most of them, most of them are pretty clear. So put these over here. I do still need to order that um, metal bowl that I said I was gonna order, I forgot. <laughs> so this is gonna be underneath. This will be on top. Oh, you know, we could even run this through if we wanted to. We could run that through the Subtles folder. But I'm going to keep this background pretty simple because what we're going to add on top of it, I'm hoping is going to make it look cool if it works out the way I think it worked out. Like I said, it was definitely a mistake when I made it the other day. So, and I just have to tell you guys, it is so quiet in here. It is like freaky quiet. I wish I could have some music playing, but then, you know, when you put this on YouTube... <laughs> Sometimes they'll yell at you for copyright infringement. Oh my lord. It is so quiet in this house. It's freaky. Totally freaky. Let's see. Maybe tomorrow it'll be nice. I can at least open the window so I can listen to the birds or something outside. All right. So there's those just in case we want to use those. All right. So what I'm going to do again... And I was kind of just trying to decide which I wanted to go with, but I think with this card, it's going to be prettiest to use copper. So let me show you what I meant. And I don't really have an idea, so this is going to be like fly by the seat of your pants. So I have copper embossing powder. And I'm going to do it with what I did the other day, and we'll see if that works or not. And if not, we will adjust from there. So I'm going to go ahead and take... I have my card base. I'm gonna just fold this and use my bone folder. And then I'm gonna put this down. Thank you, Donna. She sent me a bazillion things of uh, Fast Fuse. So I have more Fast Fuse, so you all can just use whatever glue you choose to use. So I'm gonna put this down on top of the base. So again, we have crumb cake base, soft suede layer. It's just cut quarter inch um, smaller. Then we have magnolia paper. And I'm not going to put this on yet. This is a quarter inch smaller. So this is three and three quarters by five. This is uh, four by five and a quarter on our regular base. So let me move this over. All right. So what I'm going to do is, where did I put my, here's my copper. So my copper, I'm going to put my heat gun on again. And you do have to be careful only because depending on what this hits, because it's going to be hot, it could be very messy. So I'm going to pull out my, um, my plastic cutting board that I covered with foil just to keep it safe and to keep it from overheating because the other week I did it on the, um, silicone craft mat. And it kind of started making it bubble a little bit, so I'm going to do it on this. All right, so here's what I did. So I have my copper, and 
I'm gonna do it exactly like I did it the other week, and we're gonna just have to find something else to do with it. Where is wrong do that? Hold on, I'm looking for my right thing that I grabbed. Okay. So what I have are the leaf trinkets. And I thought I was running out, but I have more. So when I made this card the other week, I only had silver left and I wanted a copper one. So what I did was, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it just exactly like I did it. I have a piece of scrap. So I took my copper piece. You are going to need some sort of a tweezer for this. I took my copper piece. I took my, oops, Versamark and I just inked directly onto this because I wanted to make it for silver. I wanted to make it copper. So I just inked it up and then move this over to the side. I grabbed my coffee filter and I dumped this on. And then I pulled it out. Okay. So this was cool enough. So then I just went and I heated it. I'm gonna heat this up. And as you see, it makes a really cool embellishment. You could do this with any color, right? And then while it's hot, I just went and re-dipped it. And I heated it again. It's kind of heating both sides. And then I re-dipped it again. And I'm, you know, everybody's like, we've seen this already. So then what I did though, is I heated it again and I noticed it was starting to get a little goopy. So I was kind of like blowing the powder through. And if it still does it, let's see if it's gonna do it right. It started dripping. So I'm gonna dip this again, just so it's got a fresh coat on. Hold on, I can't pick it up. My, my tweezers aren't cooperating. So I just kept heating it. And the bubbles were going through and they were kind of starting to drip off. Because it was running down the bottom because there was so much of it. So I'm sure what you probably could do if you wanted to was to find something that you have that's maybe old, like an old dull set of tweezers. And I wanna just show you this for a second before I re-dip this. But I have all these little drips. You see, I don't know if you can just see those, hold on. I have all these little drips of copper that are on the paper. So I have a drip here drips and it's just very random so I'm gonna just lift this up again and I will tell you one thing you really do have to be careful because whatever you're using is gonna get a little bit goopy with the uh, embossing powder so that's why I said you might want to use something that's old like an old set of tweezers and you could dip the end or maybe you have an old um, an old pick or something that you don't care if it gets yucky. You could just dip the end in and let it drip off. And again, this was kind of just by me being messy is how I found this. You even touch it down if you wanted to, that way it's closer. And just remember, you do need to give your, um, your embossing powder time to dry because it will burn you now I'm gonna take this piece and just let it sit here so it can dry and again my tip of my tweezers is definitely pretty goopy and one other thing I want to tell you is you will end up with little spots here that the powder has liquefied so you want to make sure that you're careful Okay, because you don't want to accidentally heat your whole puddle here. So you probably could do this another way. I'm sure there's probably more than one way. You could even, when you're finished with your um, 
tweezers, you could just heat them until they drip if you wanted to, or just heat them until they touch. What I did was I heated them until they got liquidy and then I wiped it off very, very, very carefully with a um, shop towel that I've told you guys I have before because they are really, really hot. So I just kind of cleaned them off with my shop towel once I heated them. So you do, they are clean, but you do want to be super, super duper careful with that. But I thought it was a really cool technique. So then what I did was the rest of my powder that wasn't um, melted in any way, I just funneled it back into my thing. So I think it was like another cool way to use. And granted, this might be a little drippier than I would have gone through, but I was trying to show you guys, you know, the what you could do. So this stuff does take a minute to dry because it's definitely pretty liquidy and it's kind of like this the top might be dry but maybe the layer underneath isn't so definitely be careful but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this I'm going to put this on the side while I'm at it I'm going to just foil a couple of these or gold um not gold goodness I can't think copper I'm going to put these with copper just to like get them on the same thing and maybe we'll add one or two one or two of them to it as well so we'll just take these and we're just going to go right versa mark direct to the paper. Same on this one. And go on that one. And you could do this more than once, so that's the cool part too. Now you could also, if you wanted to, if instead of doing these with copper with something different, you could um, dip these with clear. So that would look really nice as well. Now since I have a pile here, I'm just going to flip this over and use the other side. So what I'm going to do is just take this, sprinkle it, same with this one. Versamark does stay wet a little bit longer, so you don't have to worry about really necessarily rushing to do it. If like as if it were regular ink, because our regular ink does dry a little bit faster. And I see the end of that one didn't get dipped. So move this over. And then what I'll do is just take these out with my tweezers. Give it a little bit of a shake. And you could do these also with many layers as well. And um, in case you are new here and you've never heard me say this before, embossing is what made me really, really love stamping. So that's probably why I'm like much more major on embossing than maybe some other people are. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn my heat tool back on and I'm going to grab my old paper piercer because it's got a funny tip on the end of it. And I'm going to just hold this down. Since you have the foil, it will melt faster. And I'm just going to heat this because it kind of has that back heat. Heat that. Oh, see? And that one got my finger. I'm going to tell you, hot embossing powder does burn. So be careful. Get this one. If you want them thicker, you could re-dip them. You could do different, um, you could do like copper and gold and silver or just clear. Oh, lost that one. All right. Okay. So then you have these little foiled. Again, I know that's definitely not new. This one might be a little bit goopier because remember, some of it did solidify to the back. So you can see this one is completely filled in. But again, that's another cool element that you could add to whatever card you're going to do. I'm just going to pull these off, make sure. These do dry pretty quickly when they're on just the little pieces of paper. So those aren't as bad. But this metal, make sure you wait for that to cool down. So let me move this over. And then, so now what we're going to do is finish this. Let me put this away before I drop it and have a craftastrophe. <laughs> All right. So, I have, uh, has anyone placed an order yet this morning? I know that you're now able to order. Customers are able to order from the catalog. Did anybody get anything they've been dying for? I did place my order for my uh, DSP and ribbon share. So we're going to put that on there. Maybe we'll figure out like a little something we could do with these leaves. And I'm going to add 
the sentiment and I'm going to actually add it on a piece of white since we have kind of a white, white base going on there. So let's see what we could do is I'm going to do it with pink and I believe that is petal pink that that's on. So I'm going to stick with petal pink for the sentiment. We're going to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go happy anniversary. And another thing I may actually do because I want this to be very Thin. I'm going to see how this looks. We could always even do it in a line, but I'm thinking the way the anniversary is because it's kind of scripty. We might have to stick with the way it is. So we'll see. Let me take a look and see. I'm going to grab my paper piercer, which is just a mat that when you only have a photopolymer stamp, you want to have a little bit of something cushy on it. I'm going to actually, I'm going to go with blushing bride first because I want to see how that looks. And I'm just going to stamp this kind of at the bottom so we could trim it out if we need to. That looks a little yucky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this off. I'm wondering if maybe something just didn't get cleaned all the way. And I got to tell you, I love this new um, stamp cleaning pad. It's really, really, really gets your stamps clean. You do have to make sure that you wipe off your stamps. You don't want to get it on the stickers. But I think it really, really nicely uh, cleans, especially the photopolymer stamps. So that was Blushing Bride. Let me go with, I'm going to go with Petal Pink and see if I like that better. Let's see. I'm going to try that. Let me turn this around. I think that might be a little nicer because it's a little lighter. I think that matches a little bit better. So I'm going to go with that. You could also go with a um, soft suede to match the leaves. You could do um, old olive or mossy meadow. Those would both look equally nice as well. So I'm going to do that. And maybe we'll add a little bit of mossy meadow just to bring in the background. I'm just going to grab a piece. Let's see what we have. Make sure we have some sort of a little thin strip here we can use for something. And grab my paper trimmer. In case you guys haven't heard, they are um, working on releasing a new paper trimmer. If you're a demonstrator, I believe we should be able to get it by the end of the year. I'm assuming, and again, I'm assuming, so I don't really know anything, that they will bring it to the customers maybe in the um, occasions catalog. But I'm not really 100% sure on that. That's just me speculating. See. So that goes here. We'll just trim trim that off and see what that looks like. I think I'm going to have to hand trim that just a little bit more to get it the way I want it to be. What I need is like a second desk and a stampin' sous chef. <laughs> I think I've said that before. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to snip this end off. So we have that. I'm going to just trim this up just a little bit so it's a little closer. Bring this up just a little bit at the bottom. And like that. And let's see, we could probably put this behind here. You know what? I'm going to trim this just a little bit more because I want it to be close if we're going to have that piece behind there. Because I'm now wondering if I shouldn't have made that a little bit bigger, but... Tiny bit closer. All right, so we'll go with that. We'll lay this on. So underneath, put this here. You can always another thing too. If you aren't big into, especially if they're smaller, I'm going to show you something. If you aren't big into maybe flagging the ends of things, so you know if you take a um, if you take a a piece of whatever it say you put your sentiment here and you take you snip in the middle and you cut and you cut that's like flagging the end of your your um, sentiment so if you don't like doing that another cool thing that you could do is grab whatever sentiment now this one's going to be a little bit bigger but whatever punch you have and instead of like taking it and sticking it through the punch you can actually stick it through the end especially if it's smaller and you can kind of round off the end so there you see you have a round end instead of square and you do have to be a little bit kind of eyeballing where you want it. But 
I think it's pretty cool. So it's like another way for you to be able to use your punches and then you could layer this on top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in these little guys here. Maybe we can add this person on here still. And I'm thinking, I should have thought of this ahead of time, but I feel like 50th anniversary might be silver, but I, they're gonna get copper. So we're going with copper. <laughs> copper is the new silver this for this card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to let me just kind of eyeball where I want to get this. Let me put the rest of this together. So if we have this here, we're going to put our sentiment on. We could put one of these maybe behind. Put another one behind that. There. This one's a little big. I'm going to go with the smaller one. And I think I'm going to put it behind there as well. And then I'm going to see. I don't know if we're going to be able to fit this on here too. So we'll see what this looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a, just to make it small, a mini glue dot. You could use liquid glue if you wanted to. But I'm going to grab a mini glue dot, put it on the back of there. It'll kind of give me stick for both directions. I'm just going to eyeball where I want it. Like that. Looks pretty. Kind of looks like wings, huh? Wings to fly. Wings to make your anniversary better. I'm going to grab <laughs> a couple of the black dimensionals. That way it won't be quite as noticeable. I think the full size will fit. Yep, so I'm going to put two of those on. Just like that. And before I actually put this on, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to grab my crumb cake marker, only because it's lighter. I'm going to grab the brush tip, and I'm going to just go around the edge of this just to give it a little color. Not a lot, just a teeny bit. I'm just very barely tracing the edge there just to kind of bring in that crumb cake. Ooh, super sticky. go. All right, and I'm going to lay this on here. See, does that look even? I think it needs to go over just a little bit. Looks pretty good there. So that's pretty even. And then we just kind of have to decide which end is going to be up. So do we want to have this at the bottom? I have it at the top. I kind of like this side better, but I think I might have to put it to the left instead of the right, which would be my normal, probably because I'm right-handed. That looks nice, just like that. So we'll put that together, just like that. So I'm going to, just so I can move this around a little bit in case I don't like it, I'm going to use liquid glue. And I am going to make sure I get all the way to the edge. And it is a little bumpy just because those, uh, those bumps... You can kind of feel yourself running over them. So when you use the liquid glue, it kind of gives you the adjustability that if you need to move it a little bit, you can. And then I'm going to do the same on the back of this. So just some liquid glue. Let's see. Wait, in case I don't like where I put it, I could always move it. There you go. So, you know what? I think I put this one upside down of how I said I was going to do it. <laughs> but too late now. That's okay. But I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it definitely was something that I wouldn't have thought of. You know, with the drips, it just gives like a little bit of a pretty look. There's also even a couple spots where the drips kind of like strayed and there's like a strand of, um, you can see strands of copper. I think this is really pretty. I think it's a really cool idea for a, a whoopsie anyway. I like it. I think it looks good. Hopefully you guys do too. 25 is silver, 50 is gold. Dag on it. I'm, I don't even know what I'm doing. Thank you for that, but okay, maybe next time. So they're getting copper, which is a combination of the two. <laughs> but you could even add, like what we could do is when we do the in inside of this. So I'm just going to finish that since we're here. I'm going to do a panel for the inside. See, I usually have some pre-cut, so we'll add at least a little bit of this to it. You think I should know because I have so many of my uh, grandparents' 50th anniversary things, and now that I think about it, they are all rimmed in gold. 
and their 25th was silver, but that's okay. They have these really cool um, glasses. I guess this is, again, something from that, totally from that time period. So we're going to just finish the inside of this. And it's um, glasses that come in a caddy. They have a little silver caddy, and it's got four glasses. Does anybody else have those? I have those. They were obviously my grandparents, but... I think they are so neat looking. It's like you could just, I love those kind of things where it just makes something, I don't even know. It just makes something cool and it's, just, I love retro stuff. That's just really, really, really awesome to me. So happy anniversary. They have a couple things like followed by many years and days, days and years of the same, but that would kind of more so I think be for congratulations. Wishing you a day of love and happy memories. But I'm going to go with um, side by side. Or you could even do may you grow a wonderful life together. But you're kind of already there, right? So let's do side by side. And I'm going to add in just a few other little things from the Magnolia to kind of bring it, bring the Magnolia part together. So what I'm going to do is we have this really nice leaf sentiment so what we could do is we could put the leaf down and then we can echo it with one of the copper leaves so we'll do that and I'm going to do that in mossy meadow I have side by side let me pull this one off we will do this in I'm going to do this actually in um, soft suede and then I'm going to do this I'm going to add in this flourish which to me, I'm in the medical field, so I'll say don't judge, but it reminds me of fallopian tubes. <laughs> that's probably the last thing you thought you would hear, but that's what happens when you're stamping with Rach, I guess, right? She's crazy. All right, so let me grab my um, soft suede I wanted to use for the sentiment, mossy meadow for the leaf, and then I'll stick with um, petal pink for the fallopian tube flourish. I know, that's crazy. Something really is wrong with me. <laughs> What's the 11th anniversary? That's a good question, right? I think they have a whole list of things. It's probably, one. I know one of them is paper, which is weird. But hey, money is always good, right? So I'm going to put this right here. Let's see. I want this to be light, so hopefully it'll be... Nope, that's not as light as I wanted. I'm going to flip it. Try it. We'll see which one looks better. That's nicer. So that's stamped off. It's probably not necessarily even, but that's okay. Sometimes the petal pink can come out rather crazy. So I tend to like it very, very much so stamped off. So I will do side by side. And I'm going to test this just to make sure it looks okay. That is a really crisp stamp side by side. There. There. And then I'm going to add in just a couple of leaves in Mossy Meadow. And then we will add one of those uh, leftover copper leaves. Gosh, where do I want this? That looks kind of nice, but at the same time, I can't mimic it over here. Add in a third leaf. I don't know. Threes and threes. Eh, I may end up covering one of those up. It all was going well till she got to the inside of the card. Let's see. Put one of these on the inside. We could put this in. Now, I'm not going to put this one with a glue dot because it's not going to have anything to cover it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh, I could even put some of these guys in too if I would have done those. Yeah, we'll stick with this. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this. And you definitely are going to have to let this dry, which is okay. But I'm just going to put it on the end. That way, if it kind of sticks up a little bit, it's okay. So I have just a teeny bit on there. And I'm just going to hold it just for a sec, just to make sure it stays. You could put another one. You could even probably curl these a little bit if you wanted to. Because that uh, powder does make them a little bit more flexible. Don't want my finger on it. Well, why not? We'll put two in. Somebody's fallopian tubes. Oh, thank goodness. At least it's not just me. <laughs> 
the uh, body part stamping with Rach the Stamper. This is a bit much. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm loving this or not. I don't know. I think this needs a little bit of reworking now. I think it's got a little too much. I should have stuck with a little side, side, uh, side by side, a little side step there. What do you guys think? I think it's too much. I think I'm going to have to take it down a notch and just keep the, um, <laughs> keep the side by side. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring one more out just in case, because I'm just not loving it. And you know how sometimes when you make something and you're like, Oh, that's okay. Or you're like, Oh, that's not, Oh, that's hilarious, Janet. That's too funny. Well, there you go. Now you know why. <laughs> oh my, isn't it funny? Like, like some of these stamps, how you look at them and you're like, it does look like angel wings, doesn't it? That's a, see, now there's another idea for you. If you need to make a card for someone who either is or isn't necessarily an angel, now you can take some of these little leaves from the magnolia and make them into that, right? All right, so let me try this one more time. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Take away one leaf. I agree with you, but I think at this point, if I take it away, it's going to be um, noticeable because I glued it. So let's just, we'll just do redo. Redo. All right, so there's that. We got that one at least. Bring in the side by side. Too much. You know what? And sometimes it is too much. And guess what? It's okay to say that. You are not hurting my feelings because sometimes I don't think I can tell when too much is too much. And then what I did was I stamped that one off and I shouldn't have, but that's what I get for running my yapper. All right. And let's bring in a few leaves. Maybe it just doesn't need leaves. I don't think it needs the leaves. You see, put the leaves in the corner. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Maybe I should. I'll just kind of stamp them like more than once. I agree with you. Thanks, Claire. That was a good idea. I was kind of thinking that maybe I should go there, but there you go. Leaves in the corner. And let me see if I can somehow remove one of these. Oh, I'm probably going to rip this whole card apart. Because this is sticky, but it's not sticky for that long. Nope, I got this one. We'll go with this one. I'm just going to put one. I was able to get one off. <laughs> so somehow... Somehow I'm going to have to manage a way to cover up this one and maybe use this for something else. But we'll see. If not, it's no biggie. It's only paper. All right, so then I'm going to put this, and just in case, this does wipe off. So you can stamp on this and wipe it off with a baby wipe. It does not, it's not going to stain it. Maybe black ink might a little bit, but, and I'm going to put this all the way to the edge. Make sure we have it where we want it. Come on, Rach. Thought I had that in there. And then just pop this here. And of course, this one I trimmed down a little bit smaller. This one could have been, probably was already cut, and I cut it additionally. But I do need to let this dry. So, but I think that's pretty, pretty cool card, even if you don't like go to the extra part on the inside. So hopefully they will like this card. But I think we could do this with pretty much anything. You could even do this if you did it with clear embossing powder. It would almost look like big, thick raindrops. You could do it with iridescent if you have any of that left. I know I have some of that. You could do white on black would be kind of neat or white on navy would be pretty. So lots of different options on what to do with this drippy technique. I think one other thing I would say is maybe if you have some sort of a... I don't want to say you could probably almost use, you wouldn't obviously be able to use the brush part, but if you had a paintbrush that maybe the bristles were coming out of, you could dip the end and then drip it and let it blow off of there. Um, again, I did use the element that I heated just in case you missed the beginning. So I held this with my um, reverse tweezers and then at the end I just heated up and kind of wiped the tweezers off. It definitely came off pretty well. But you might have an old set of tweezers that either don't grip as well or you really don't care about those. You could just dip them in and drip it off on there. And it also kind of depends on what you're using. So as you can see, a few of these kind of stayed, 
But if for right now, if I reheated this up, it will melt again and drip. So if I heated this and blew it from the opposite direction, I could still drip on this. So we probably have to work on something maybe to see what would be easier to drip with. Um, you could, and you could do that, but this was just, Debbie, you could absolutely use um, crystal effects, just clear drops. You certainly could. This was a whoopsie I was making when I was heat embossing this, and I had these drips come out, so I thought it was pretty fun. So that's why I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I think you guys um, hopefully learned a little something here from a mistake that I made. Like I said, you, you do have drips on your um, coffee filters, but you could always use the other side again or just throw it away. They're not terrifically expensive. You can get them at the dollar store. But I hope that uh, gave you guys a little bit of ideas for today, hopefully. Thank you all for joining me, especially late because we had a little bit of a late start. But this, unless something changes um, date-wise with school, will be my regular day from now on. So I'll be Wednesdays at 9.30, not at 10 o'clock, at 9.30 and um, 9.30 to 10.30 typically. I'm going to try to work in some maybe Mondays and Fridays as well or occasionally a Tuesday and Thursday because I will have more time now to be able to make cards. And I'm hoping um, once I get my my office like, like a little bit more reorganized because I kind of haven't stamped since last week, which was pretty sad. I'll be able to get some some cool ideas out to you guys. But if anybody, happy accidents. Exactly, Gail, totally. If anybody does need a catalog, I'd be happy to send you one. You do need to send me your uh, full mailing address to reach the stamper at gmail.com. If you like any of these supplies and more, I know we didn't use really anything from the holiday catalog, but the holiday catalog is now orderable. So if you go to reach the stamper.stampinup.net, click on holiday catalog. You can see the whole catalog. If you are a customer of mine, you should have received your catalog already. So if you didn't, do please send me an email and I will send you out another one or call to find out why it didn't go. Um, I think that's pretty much it. If you want the paper pumpkin for September, you do need to sign up by the 10th. It is a Halloween themed treat holder. It is not cards. It is a treat holder. So that one may sell out just depending on what's going on. I will keep you guys posted if there's any specials that happen to pop out. Oh, you know what we do have? I think we have buy three, get one free DSP. Ooh, isn't that a rhyme? I wonder if they thought of that one ahead of time. Oh my gosh, I can't stop now. See, buy three, get one free. But it is on mostly the ones that are in the holiday catalog. I'm not in the holiday catalog. It is not the holiday catalog. Let me clarify that. It is Bird Ballad, Come Sail Away, Dino Roar, Follow Your Art, Garden Lane, Magnolia Lane, Perennial Essence, Pressed Petals, See a Silhouette, and Woven Thread. So those are all buy three, get one free. That is September 4th, which starts today through the 30th, which is the Rainbow Stamper's birthday. So it ends at the end of the month, but that is a great way to get some stuff too if you're looking for something to stock back up with. So I think that is all I have to share with you all. Thank you again very much for joining me. I will see you again real soon, maybe before the end of the week. Take care.